What is up, people of the internet? It is me, Real American Politics, back again with a new video. And folks, what I thought was a very unlikely scenario a month ago appears to be happening right in front of our eyes. That is right, folks. It appears Republicans in the state of Minnesota have momentum across the board. So much so that you scroll down here and Scott Jensen... The Republican candidate is currently ahead of Waldo. Tim Walls, I call him Waldo because a clown is literally Waldo. He's a loser. The point is, he is ahead by a half point over the incumbent governor of the state of Minnesota. This is major news. As originally I thought, okay, this was a, crock, a tough crack, a tough nut to crack. Messed up my English there. I thought this was a very tough nut to crack because Minnesota, as we've seen in the past, really doesn't vote Republican. Sure, there's a couple senators here and there that were Republican, but l lately they really have not had a statewide Republican. Sure, there was a couple governors recently, a, like a couple years ago, but as of like the past four years or so, Republicans really have not been performing that well in the state of Minnesota outside of like the state Senate. Well... It appears there's a shot Republicans have of winning the governorship in the state of Minnesota. Now, before we continue with today's video, I hope you enjoy these type of videos. If you do, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow that Twitter account in the description down below, and join the channel today. That is right, folks. For just 10 cents a day, you can join Real American Politics. Only 10 cents a day. That's a phenomenal deal, and I recommend you join today. So let's get it right in today's video. So like I said in the intro, this is a very tough state for Republicans to win. Why? Jeez, I wonder why it's so hard to win. Oh, the single two counties that Minneapolis is in. Sure, you could consider Dakota and Washington counties, you know, the suburbs of it. But these two counties here, Ramsey and Hennepin, these are the two freaking counties that keep the state blue. If it wasn't for these two freaking counties, it's more than likely Republicans would win the state of Minnesota year in and year out. Again, Minnesota is a fascinating state to look at politically. It has a lot of rural elements to it. In fact, there's a lot of rural Democrats still left in Minnesota, which is very hard to believe. The only state that really has that left is like Vermont and parts of New York, it's, but not really in the Great Plains or the Midwest. You really don't have these many rural Democrats left. And they're mostly, what's left of them are in the Iron Range, close to Rochester, and just overall the rest of the state isn't as red as other Great Plains states. I guess you can't say Minnesota isn't the a Great Plains state exactly, but you go here, and a lot of these rural counties in the surrounding states like the Dakotas, Iowa parts of Wisconsin, etc., they just seem a bit more red than a lot of these rural counties in Minnesota. Now, Wisconsin, there's a, there are not that many red counties, but you get the point. It just seems like compared to other states close to it, like the Dakotas, Iowa, parts of Wisconsin, a lot of these counties, they really, they're really not voting as Republican as you would think. Now, the Duluth area, this is the Iron Range, this has been Democrat for decades. This is the definition of ancestral Democrats. Well, in 2016, Trump did phenomenal in these counties. In 2020, they shifted towards Biden. Now, there's a lot of questions about what really happened in Minnesota. Not alleging anything. I just think that Biden did win the state. But there is a lot of reasons for why Trump didn't perform that well in Minnesota. I truly think the number one reason was the riots in Minneapolis. That killed him. That basically killed Trump's chances in Minnesota, looking back at it. He handled it pretty badly, the Minneapolis riots. I mean, compared to the, how he handled like Kenosha and other riots, he really didn't handle Minneapolis that well. And this was one of those situations where it hurt Trump because he didn't send in the National Guard. He didn't do anything with Minneapolis. It just... That was kind of Trump's biggest L's in 2020. The biggest reason I do think you saw a significant swing towards the Democrats, I mean, in particular the Minneapolis area. But 
I think that phase is kind of past. A lot of people are going to say it's white guilt. I really don't think so. Sure, the inner parts of Minneapolis, there probably are some white voters that they're sad to be white and they're like, they're depressed about it. It's like, what's wrong with you? But either way, a lot of these counties, in particular the burbs of Minneapolis, shift the Democrat. Now, I don't think these trends are going to continue, not at least in a place like Anacoa, maybe a place like Dakota or Washington could, but these other counties like Scott, Carver, etc., I truly think Trump's botch response to the riots played a bigger impact than we originally thought. Now, as for the governor's race, the biggest issue in the state of Minnesota is, surprise, surprise, inflation. The number two issue? Well, or I should say issue number one that's, actually, yeah, the second biggest issue to voters is reducing crime. This is a perfect scenario for Republicans. Over 60% of voters in the state of Minnesota said reducing crime or fighting inflation are the biggest issues voting how they're going to vote this cycle. As for the other parts, it's like ensuring abortion remains available and accessible. Just under 20% of voters. And you look at the rest of these issues, yeah, like fighting for equity and against systematic racism. Based on what you could see here, only what? What is that? 28, you know, 35% of voters are voting on an issue that's favorable to Democrats. While the other 65% of the vote are voting on issues that favor Republicans, inflation, crime, and immigration. That bodes well with Scott Jensen. Now, of course, we have a lot of memes on this channel, but I think the biggest one recently have become the weed parties. Look, again, we're sending a gift basket to these weed parties if Jensen wins, because they're the reason that Jensen would have won, uh, is the reason that Jensen won. Because nobody's going to crack 50%. It's just highly unlikely. But these weed parties, come on, keep taking more of the vote, please, I beg of you. And these weed parties, sure, they're not taking, they're only taking like 2.1% of the vote, yes. But if this race is within a point, that 2% would have probably got walls over the hump. Now, as for the other statewide races... You got the Attorney General race. It appears the Republicans are going to win that one. Secretary of State, that seems a bit less likely. State Auditor, it's actually looking pretty good. Once again, the Wade parties taking 6% of the vote in the State Auditor race. Come on. Just, we need a little bit more. I, look, I'm not a big fan of third party splitting votes, but when it benefits my side, I love it. I hope that these Wade parties take as much of the vote as possible so Republicans get as many statewide officials as they could possibly get elected in Minnesota. Plus, I think they could flip one of the state legislators. Now, the question is this. Where will the election be decided in Minnesota? Usually, it's a bit simple. For example, in Pennsylvania, it's, you know, northeastern Pennsylvania is the critical part of the state. You know, places like Luzerne, Pike, etc. As for Minnesota... It gets a bit tougher because there are two ways you can win Minnesota currently. Number one, max out the rural parts of the state. Like, you can't be getting, you know, in a place like Meeker, 69% nice. That's actually that's actually pretty good for most of these counties. But a place like Stevens, 60%, they should be voting blood red like in parts of Ohio, parts of Indiana, etc. There's no reason these counties should be voting just pink red. I understand they're not the exact same, but there are similar aspects. Rural, working class, a lot of former Democrats in these part of the this part of the country. Also, you gotta do better in the Iron Range. There's a lot of blue collar Democrats that still vo vote Democrat up here, but there is some signs that there is change happening in the Iron Range. Remember 2020? A bunch of mayors in the Iron Range that were Democrats endorsed Trump. And that's why I think you look at a place like St. Louis, Carlton, Lake, etc. They didn't shift that Democrat. In fact, a place like Carlton actually shifted a bit Republican. The other parts, they basically did not trend at all Democrat. I think there is something happening in the Iron Range. I truly think those endorsements played a factor. I just think that with the riots, 
it kind of hurt Trump's chances in the state of Minnesota. But the other option, which it theoretically could be easier or harder, look, you got to win Washington, Dakota counties. And you can't get crushed at Hennepin or Ramsey. Like, the other option is max rural areas and don't get annihilated in this part of the state. In this strategy, you got to make sure you win a place like Washington. You have to win Washington in this scenario and get very close to winning Dakota. And also, you have to make these counties essentially blood red around Minneapolis. Because, again, down ballot, Republicans do better in the Minneapolis area than they do up ballot. The rural part's a bit more Democrat down ballot. You get the point. But I think that Scott Jensen... If he finds a good counterbalance, if he doesn't get completely annihilated in the rules compared to Trump or something like that, but also makes significant inroads in this part of the state with turnout being down in place like Minneapolis, you got a shot. But for now, I have this race as a toss up. It's going to be down the wire. We just got to see what happens. Hopefully we could pull it off at the end of the day. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, smash the like button down below, subscribe, share with your friends, hit that little bell, follow that Twitter account in the description down below, and join the channel today. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Godspeed to all of you.